Hey folks, welcome back to another video. Now this video is a part of series known as containers for beginners. But if you have stumbled upon my channel for the first time, do hit the subscribe and the like button because it supports me to create more content like this. Now in this video, I'm going to talk about a few topics and the main one is microservices. But before that, there are a few things that you need to know, which is first of all, we're going to understand what exactly is a monolith application. We are going to talk about the advantages, the disadvantages of it and then we are going to move to the microservices and how do they talk to each other and much more in this video. So without wasting any time, let's dive right into the video. Okay, so this is how a monolith or a traditional application looks like. So uh, basically a monolithic architecture is a traditional model of a software program which is built as a unified unit that is self-contained and independent from other applications. So uh, this word monolith is often attributed to something large or something glacial uh, which isn't far more of a truth of a monolithic architecture from a software design. All right. So uh, this is a very basic idea. So let me explain this. So here you can see that this is could be a client browser. I'm taking ex an example of an application and it might be having some inventory, it might be having uh, a shopping cart and the payment section. So you can take an example of Amazon. So it has a browser, right? You are a client, uh, you open a browser, you uh, make a call to some inventory, you want to buy shoes, you want to buy stuff, you put it into a cart and then you pay, right? So this is a very basic idea of how an, uh, a traditional monolithic application would look like. And then this, everything of this would be supported on a single instance. So. Uh, Monolith can be convenient early in a project life for ease of code management or uh, or deployment, but this allows everything in a monolith to be released as one. So that's kind of uh, one thing that can be used. So this is a very basic example of how a monolithic application uh, should look like. Uh, we'll talk about the advantages and uh, disadvantages uh, about this. So let's talk about the advantages first. So the first thing is easy debugging. So if you want to debug it, it would be easy for you. So let me write this easy debugging. Why? Because uh, with all the code located at one place, one system, it's easier to follow a request to find an issue and then figure it out and deliver it to the client. Okay. So this is uh, one thing. Uh, the next thing is uh, the performance uh, uh, part. So when you talk about the performance part, uh, we say that uh, if the code base is at one place or uh, centralized uh, in a repository, uh, there are there could be multiple APIs that, that are used in your project, right? And one API can perform the same function that numerous API perform with microservices. So the performance come at a, at a good thing, right? So that's one thing. Uh, the third point we can talk about is the easy, uh, easy deployment, basically. So the deployment becomes easy for the DevOps or the SREs. Why? Because there could be a one executable file or a directory or uh, everything at one place that makes a, your deployment a bit easier and then uh, for developers we have the development part as well so let me write that development part so uh, when an application is built with one code base it's easier to develop because you don't have to maintain a lot of code base you don't have to go to a lot of repositories one repository would do and that would make your development much more easier all right and similarly uh, something if there is anything for devops and something for developers there would be something for tester and the testing becomes easy how uh, again the same thing uh, since the monolithic application is a centralized unit right and end-to-end -end testing can be performed faster with the than the distributed application we'll talk about that in the other part okay but uh, when we talk about the advantages there are disadvantages as well let's talk about that okay so when we talk about the disadvantages the first one we would we would see is slower development speed so when there is a monolithic application that uh, we we work on it makes development more complex and slower because uh, a lot of services would be inside one application and that would made our development speed very much small because there would be a lot of dependencies here and there. All right. Uh, so this is the one. The second one we talk about is scalability. Scalability, you cannot scale individual components. You can just uh, write a lot of code in that, but you cannot scale. So that's one disadvantage. Uh, the other one is reliability. Now, this is the one of the most uh, talked about point. Like if there is an error in any module, it could affect the entire application. How does that work? So consider a scenario for a DevOps person and who is deploying the code. Okay, so there could be 10 modules, right? And in order for the application to come up, these all modules has to get deployed properly. But if one of them goes down, there won't be a service that goes down. It goes takes down the whole application. And this is one of the most 
uh, you can say worst reason, worst disadvantages that we have in monolithic application. Okay. So if someone asks you in an interview, this is one you should go with reliability and then you can talk about the other points. Another one is lack of flexibility. A monolithic application is constrained by the technologies already used in a monolith and there is very little room or no room for the flexibility part. So that's one point that you can make. Uh, we talk about the deploy as a DevOps engineer, we talk about the deployment. The, a small change to a monolithic application requires the redeployment of an entire monolith. How? Because let's say if these are one, two, three, four, five modules over there, and then I have just only updated this module over here. But in this module, in order to go online with the latest code, all the modules has to be deployed because this works as if one single monolith application. And that's how it's one of the most talked about disadvantages. All right. And the last one, which I wanted and kept it for last is barrier to technology adoption. Now, what do you mean by barrier to technology adoption is any changes in the framework or language affects the entire application, making changes often expensive and time consuming. And in order to explain this, let us talk about a scenario. So consider, uh, consider this application and this application is uh, written in Java code and plus other languages. The database uh, is used, let's say uh, MySQL you have used and there would be some connection strings that would be working on. And then it would be using some uh, testing. For example, you're using some JUnit test casing, cases, uh, sonar queue for code quality and much more and much more. We're not, we're not going to talk about a lot of things. Sonar queue for the code quality. Now consider a scenario that how it would a barrier to technology adoption because our application is, let's say tomorrow, we are talking about moving it to MLOps uh, for the machine learning. And Java is one of the most sought after, not Java, Python is the most sought after language for these kind of projects. So we want to move the whole application from Java to Python. But if we do that, that would be a barrier to a technology. Why? Because uh, the connection strings would be different and we don't know how the Python would act. The whole pipeline will affect will be affected because uh, we cannot use Maven to compile the project, uh, the product, because Maven won't compile it. Python, I guess, if I remember correctly. And if it does, it might need some changes. And there, you cannot use JUnit test cases. Python shall have will have some some of their own libraries to get uh, uh, for the J unit test casing. Code quality setup would be entirely different for a Java project and for a Python project. So that's an example of barrier to technology adoption. So, so this is one of the advan uh, disadvantage that comes in mind when we talk about the disadva disadvantage. All right, so let's talk about the microservices, why uh, microservices came into picture and why do we need them and how this monolith or monolithic application can be improved. All right. so okay, so let us understand what are the microservices. So a microservice architecture, also simply known as microservices, is an architectural method that relies on a series of independently deployable services. And remember this word, independently deployable services. These services have their own business logic and database with a specific goal. Testing, deployment, updating, and scaling occur within each service. Microservices decouple major business domain-specific concerns into separate independent code bases. Microservices don't reduce complexity, but they make any complexity visible and more manageable by separating tasks into smaller processes that function independently of each other and contribute to the over whole, overall whole, basically. So uh, adopting microservices often goes hand in hand with DevOps uh, and as a DevOps engineer, you need to know this since they are basis for continuous delivery practices that allow team to adapt quickly and uh, to give it to the user requirement. All right. So let us talk about the microservices architecture. So what you can see over here is exactly the same application that I was talking about uh, a few minutes back, but this is with a Microsoft architecture. So now there would be a client and this client is a browser. It's going to make a certain call to UI microservice. And I'm taking an example of just UI microservice over here. So if you have opened Amazon, you would see a UI over there, right? And each application, uh, the whole application has a lot of microservices and any microservice can make a call to any other microservice. All right. So you can see over here, his inventory cart, the shopping cart and the payment part. All right. And this is a very basic architecture of a microservice. You can see that uh, this is going to make a call to a cart or to an inventory or to a payment. This and this are connected. Cart and payment are connected. Cart and inventory are connected. So anything can make a call to anything. Okay, so that's how you understand it, all right? Okay, so let's talk about the advantages first. So basically microservices are by no means 
a silver bullet, but they solve a number of problems by growing software and companies. Since a microservice architecture consists of units that run independently, each service can be developed, deployed, updated, and scaled without affecting other services. Software updates can be performed more frequently with CI/CD, with improved reliability, uptime, and the performance. We want, uh, we basically, we went from pushing updates once a week to two, three times a day, and that's a huge improvement for any sort of our organization. All right, so let's talk about the advantages. So the first one that you see over here is agility. So it promotes agile ways of working with small teams that deploy frequently. All right, and that's what we've talked about. Flexible scaling is basically if a microservice reaches its load capacity, new instance of that service can rapidly be deployed to the accompanying cluster to help relieve this pressure. You can take an example of a load balancer. We are now multi-tenanted, stateless, with customers spread across multiple instances. Now we can support much larger instance sizes. Okay, so that's why we talk about the flexible scalability. Continuous deployment, so this is the best point for the DevOps engineer. We now have frequent and faster release cycles. Uh, remember, we were talking about a uh, monthly roll, uh, rollout, but now you can do two to three times a day, and that's a huge improvement. And before we push out updates once a week, and now we can do so about two to three times a day. The next one is maintenance and testing. It's highly maintainable and highly testable. Team can experiment with new features and rollback if something doesn't work. This makes it easier to update the code and accelerate time to market for new features. Plus, it's easily to isolate and fix faults and bugs in an individual service. Let's talk about this. When the, there are four microservices and this service is somehow down and not deployed, but this one would be up. So what will happen is a user would be able to see these three services. Uh, for example, this is shoes, this is clothes, and this is um, cricket, related to cricket or something, sports stuff, all right? People would be able to see this, but not this. And this can be easily fixable. You don't have to keep all of these services down. You can fix this separately. That's how it's maintainable and testable. Okay, the next point is independent. So basically everything is independently deployable. Since microservices are individual units, they allow for fast and easy independent deployments for individual features. You can deploy this service if it's down and without touching this. All right, and that's how independently deployable work. The last point is technological flexibility. We were talking about the technology flexibility, right? So microservice architecture allows team to freedom to select the tools they want, they desire. All you have to do is you can you can build this module in Python, you can build this module in Java, you can build this module in JavaScript, you can build this module in C Sharp. That can coexist together because everything is independent of each other. All you have to do is you just have to expose an API and then that's how it is going to talk to each other, okay? That's the, one of the most fair point that we should talk about. Okay, the other points could be happier teams and the high reliability because uh, you can deploy changes for a specific service without the threat of bringing down the whole end application. So I will write that in bold, reliability. All right, so that's that's one thing, all right. But uh, when we say that there there is not everything that uh, is a bed of roses, so we have our disadvantages as well. So let's talk about that as well. Okay. So, okay, so when we talk about the disadvantages, there are a few. Uh, let's talk about the first one, which is development sprawl. So microservices add more complexity compared to a monolithic architecture since there are more services in more places created by multiple teams. If development sprawl isn't properly managed, it results in slower development speeds and poor operational performance. So you have to take care about that thing that this development sprawl must not arise. Okay, second thing is infrastructure cost. When we talk about the infrastructure cost, infrastructure, it goes exponentially because each new microservices can have its own cost for the test suite, deployment, hosting infrastructure, monitoring tools, and a lot more. So infrastructure can really shoot up with microservices, all right? Then we have uh, organization overhead, and that's something that is added because team needs to add another level of communication and, colla and collaboration to coordinate updates and the interfaces because you were doing once a month previously, right? But now you are doing two to three times a day. So you have an extra added organizational overhead. When we say lack of standardization, it means without common platform, there can be a proliferation of languages, logging, standards, and monitoring. So this is something that you need to uh, take care uh, because that can arise when we talk about the microservices. People, the team lead, the manager has to come to a common consensus for the standardization part. There can be separate meetings for that, separate things for that, but that can be done. Okay, lack of clear ownership is the last point uh, which I would like to mention. As more services are introduced, so are the number of teams running and those services over time. 
it becomes difficult to know the available services a team can leverage and who to do. There are a few ways to overcome this, but uh, that is just talking about a disadvantage on a 10,000 feet world overview. All right, so this is basically how it looks like. Now we are going to draw a very beautiful diagram so that you can understand the difference how it makes. Okay, so let us select some good color. Okay, so when we're talking about a moonlit application, so let's talk about halfway here and halfway here. So let's talk about the microservices. So how it would look like. So here, let's say these, these are the settings, something like settings, basically the core logic. Okay, this could be, this could be your core logic. This could be your client. Let's, this could be your client. And this is not like this. This should be something like this. Let me just remove this. Let me just remove this. Okay, perfect. So this would be something like this. And this after that, uh, there could be a database over here. And after that, there could be uh, infra. Let's say infra over here, and it would look something like this. And not this, like this. Okay, so one application is talking to other sort of tool, basically. When we talk about the versus part, we talk about the microservices. This would be something like this. The core logic, the DB, whole of this as one unit. And similarly, if I select all of this, so I'll just control C, sorry, control V, one more control V, I'll just pick this here, I'll like this, and all of this would be talking to each other, like this. It would be talking to each other, this would be talking to each other, this would be talking to each other. So that is a basic difference between the architecture of a monolith and a microservices. You can see all those components, you can see all those components from here, from here to here, but they are working as independent. You can see everything is independent. And this thing is dependent. Okay, so from a 10,000 feet view, this is how it would look like. All right, so I hope uh, you folks have understood this part. Um, if there is anything, feel free to comment below and we will address that. So thanks guys, and I'll see you in the next one.